Number three then from paper two of the 2017 New Hire Mass. There we go, intersection of a line with a circle. Five marks here. Now the only handy thing about that diagram, I suppose, is it shows you that of the two solutions you've got, one's positive positive and one's negative negative. So that probably helps you check if your solution's on the right track or not. Well, it's just a case of substitute one into the other. Now you could expand that first and then substitute it in, but there's no harm substituting it in the way that it is, so that's what I'll do. I'll substitute one in two. So that's going to read x minus two squared plus, and luckily y is only made up of one term, 3x minus 1 squared equals 25. Now, having done that, or expanding it and then putting it in, but having done the substitution, gets you the first mark. Now the next mark's not going to come until you've got it all tidied up. So here we go, so there's a square, square the first, and you've got twice the product, that'll be minus 4x, square the last, same again here, square the first, 9x squared, twice the product will be negative 6x, doubling it, plus 1. You may as well bring the 25 over at the same time to equal 0. Now you tidy up and you hope that the numbers are favourable for factorisation here. Well, you've got 10x squared. So if everything else is made up of 5s or 10s, that'll be fine. And there you go. Minus 10x. Minus 20. Couldn't look nicer. Arriving at that gets the next mark. Now the way you solve this sort of equation is you factorise it. If factors multiply to give zero, one of the factors must be zero. Now, what that also means is, if you've got any obvious non-zero factor, it is not a candidate and it can be discarded. Ten is a common factor here. That factor can't be zero, so there's no need for ten to appear. You could effectively just divide 10 out of that equation and it won't affect your solutions. Of course you can divide by 10. In the marking scheme it says, do not penalise candidates who have divided by 10 as if there's something wrong with that. I have no idea why they say that. Somebody must have a case of the root somewhere. There are cases where you want to maintain that factor. Nothing here. Maybe just to humour them, we will keep in that 10. Here we go. There's your 10 x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. Now there are cases where you'd want to keep everything in if you wanted to maintain the value of this original expression because certainly it's easier to evaluate a factorization than it is an expanded form. And you would do that for instance if you had a derivative, if you were differentiating to find stationary points because it's easier to find the value of the derivative in the factorized form than the original form. You would do it if you were trying to find the x-intercepts of some function because from the factorised form you'd get the x-intercepts and if you had to evaluate any other points the factorised form is an easier way of working them out. But here this is essentially a disposable equation. It's of no further use to you apart from finding these two roots. So that 10 can go but let's just keep it there to keep them happy. So what have we got? x times x, 1 times 2, the middle's negative, so that must be negative, plus 1, so there's two answers. x equals negative 1, x equals 2. Now, ranting on, stop me putting in this bit, the third mark was for factorising it. It may be that they're wanting to see the factorisation with all three parts, even though the tens are redundant factor in this case. I don't know why they make that statement. But you're perfectly entitled to divide by 10 if you do not, for any reason, wish to maintain the value of the original expression. If you want an equation for life, rather than just a disposable one. Now you've got to find the y-coordinates. Now, of course, this isn't going to give you the y-coordinates. That's why it's of no further use to you. The y-coordinates come from these, and you're obviously going to use this. So using one... If x is 1, y is 3, sorry, negative 1, 3 times negative 1. And if x is 2, y is 3 times 2. So y is going to be negative 3, and y is going to be 6. Now there's a mark for each of these, no matter which. There'll be a mark for this and a mark for that, or a mark for one pair and a mark for the other pair. One mark here, one mark there. Because again... I suppose they're just reasoning, if it asks for the coordinates, those are the coordinates. 
However, I wouldn't be happy until I'd written them out afterwards. So there's the point negative one, negative three, and it intersects also at two, six. But here you get the marks just by stating the individual coordinates.